following lecture was produced by Glorianne Publishing, a nonprofit organization, and is one of hundreds of lectures freely available via download, podcasts, streaming radio, and transcription. These lectures range in topic and complexity in order to address the many needs of humanity. We invite you to browse our library of lectures, books, courses, and articles to find teachings that suit you. Through the support of donations, Glorian Publishing has published 40 books, hosts international retreats several times a year, offers free online courses, and many other valuable resources, available to anyone worldwide. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Your donations make it possible for this free public service to reach thousands of people every day. To make a tax-deductible donation in any amount, even anonymously, visit GnosticTeachings.org. Now, with heartfelt wishes for the end of suffering for all creatures, we begin the lecture. May all beings be happy. Uh, following the sequence of lectures on the 22 arcana of the tarot, and uh, explaining today the arcanum number four, which is called the Emperor. The King, the Emperor, is related with the fourth Sephira of the Tree of Life, which is called Hesed. When you study the Tree of Life and the relation of the Tree of Life with the planets of our solar system, then we find that Hesed is governed by Jupiter and also by Mars. Many Kabbalists state that he said the innermost, our own particular spirit, is ruled only by Jupiter. But when we discover that our own particular spirit has to fight for his own self-realization, it has to do the work, the internal work in the human being, then we discover that he is also a warrior, a fighter. So he's also, that's why we state in Gnosticism that he said is ruled by Mars. This is a particular individual spirit of each one of us, he said, which is related with the emperor, the king. That's why, uh, astrologically speaking, we said that the kings are ruled by Jupiter. And now we are going to go very deep, following the sequence of the lectures, in order to explain the biblical Adam related with this lecture. Remember that in the book of Genesis it is written that Adam is the king of nature, an emperor. And uh, it is very interesting to see that when we read the Bible, we read the word Adam, which many translators translate as man. But uh, for a better explanation, it's better if we translate it as human being. 
As in Hebrew, you said ish, man, and isha is woman. Like, for instance, in Greek, you said uh, anthropos for human being and andros for man. So we have to make the difference. What is an andros and what is an anthropos? Or what is a man and what is Adam? Or ish and Adam? Because in a previous lecture, when we were talking about the letter Bet, we were explaining that after the division of sexes, the man Ish and his woman Isha were the two particles of the same being, which was Adam. And behold that the word Adam <coughs> has uh, or is written with three letters, Hebrew letters, Aleph, Dalet, Mem. Aleph, we already know, that is related with the air, with the ruach, with the wind, with the spirit, with God. The holy three, unity. Dalet, which is precisely the lecture of today, is related with the terrestrial man. And when we talk about the terrestrial man, we have to explain the word terrestrial or earthly which is related with Malkut, the ten sephira, in the very bottom of the tree of life. This Malkut means the kingdom. Now we have to state very specifically that a kingdom cannot exist without a king and without a queen. So the king is the emperor of the tarot. Because the man, or we will say it, Adam, is called to be king of nature. Has to control nature. When I said nature, I am referring to the whole planet. Because the planet Earth is called Malkut, the kingdom. Because it is formed by four kingdoms. The mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and the human kingdom. But those kingdoms are controlled by the four elements of nature. And here is when we have to emphasized in the number four because Dalet, the emperor, is related with the holy tetragrammaton, the holy name of God, yod He vav He, which we translate as yod Hava, which is Yod, Adam, and Chava, Eve. So these four letters are related with the four elements of nature. Fire, water, air, and earth. The four elements that uh, it's already very well explained in the website related with the uh, Four ways in which the initiate has to learn how to control <coughs> the elements of nature. Because if we are slaves of the elements of nature, then we are not kings of nature, but slaves of nature. And the Adam of Genesis controls the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, the beasts of the earth, and the creatures that cripple. Those are an illusion of the four elements of nature that Adam has to control, has to command. It is not as many people 
misunderstand. They, they think that to be king of the earth or nature is to exploit all the earth and take advantage of the planet. As in this day and age, people are doing it. And uh, it's causing, of course, uh, problems for the planet. A real king is a wise man. It's coming into my mind, the three wise men of the Gospels that it is written were visiting the birth of the God child in Bethlehem. And this is something that we have to comprehend. Three. Because these three wise men are related with the three levels in which Chochma, the Christ, develops the power of the king within the terrestrial man. So, in the Bible, the word Adam for man, or for that human being that is a king of nature, is directly related with the other word Adama, or Adama, which means ground. It's written there that that creature, human being, that was made into the image of God, Adam, was taken from the ground, Adama. It is good to emphasize here that this word Adama, which ends with He at the end, is a feminine word. We will not commit any mistake if we say that this Adama is a feminine aspect of the earth. Because the earth itself is, uh, Kabbalistically speaking, feminine. That's why in many religions, when they refer to the earth, they said Mother Earth. Obviously, Mother Earth has all the elements necessary in order to create the terrestrial man which is the poor man in uh, Kabbalah. Because the rich man is symbolized by Hesed, which is the spirit, the monad, which is within each one of us. So Hesed is, of course, that is spirit that is made into the image of God and that never sings. It's always pure. It's always holy. When I say this, it comes into my memory certain conversation that I had with the Master Samael on the or. When you enter into these Gnostic studies, you always wonder about the name, the holy name of God. And you understand and comprehend uh, that the name of God is individual in each one of us. That means that our own particular Hesed, which is El, God, has his own name. And that name means something for you. So to discover the name of God is to, co- to discover your own entity, your own kin, your own emperor. So I asked the Master Samael, being a resurrected master, obviously very awakened, he knew very well the inner beings of everybody. But he was very cautious to unveil the sacred name of all people, because it's sacred. Holy be his unutterable name. And then I asked him, Master, You know the name of my being. Can you tell me who my being is? And he said, He is holy. You are not. And he kept silence. Then from that time, 
I meditated in that. He understood that God within has said is holy. That's why his uh, sacred uh, appellation or name in the world of Atsiluth is El. In Hesed, El, God. Obviously, El is holy within each of us. But we are not. And this is something that we have to understand. But we have to be perfect as he is perfect. And that is the process of initiation. To acquire perfection. To be into the image of God. And that is precisely the great transformation that he, we had to acquire. And the book of Genesis explains very clear. That in the beginning, when that Adam is created, he falls. He sins. And it is because the nature of the terrestrial man is sinful. To transform that into holy is a great work that only God can perform. And that's why the emperor needs the assistance of wisdom. Wisdom is chokhmah, the second sephira. And that wisdom is what we call in Christianity the Son of God, Christ. And it's not because only that Sephira by itself is Christ. Because we know that Christ unfolds in many fires, many lights. But the most beautiful atoms of Christ shine in Chokhmah. And that's why Chokhmah receives the name of Yod He Vav He. It's the first Sephira in which we find the holy name of God, Kabbalistically speaking. So when we read Yod Chava in the Bible, it's referring to the Sephira Chokhmah. Yod Chava by itself. Because if we read Elo, Yod Chava Elohim, and then we are reading related with Bina. So obvious, when you read the Bible, you have to find, if it's Yod Chabah by itself, is related, related to Christ, the Son, Chokhmah, which is the one that transforms and enters into the human being in order to transform him into a child of God. And that's a process that has to come, but first, we have to create Adam. Adam has to be created. It is a mistake, a big mistake to think that Adam exists. Symbolically speaking, or alchemically, Kabbalistically, we say Adam to the male aspect. But this Adam... It's difficult to find. Because it has to be created. Genesis is a book of actuality. It's not a book that, happen, that says that happened, <coughs> or that tells us the story of this world. We will say that if we read it in that way, we also find the explanation of the creation of this planet. But alchemically speaking, gnostically speaking, this book of Genesis is telling us the way in which the man, Adam, has to be created. So this Adam has to exist in each one of us. Adam is a true human being. is a true man. With that we are pointing that we are not human beings. We are not men. We are intellectual animals. And behold here the word animal. Comes from the Latin anima. Which means soul. 
intellectual souls. But we are not into the image of Hesed. They are alone into the image of that above Hesed. Which is the three supernals. Because that is a process. First we have to create the man. And then the superman. The super in the man is the three supernals. Keter, Chochma, Bina. That's the super. A superman can be created only in the man. But the man has to be created. Nietzsche, in his book, Das Spock Zaratustra, he spoke a lot of the superman. But he taught about the superman to intellectual animals. They don't understand about the superman. That's why many things that we explain here related with the superman is, is difficult to understand. Because the man does, doesn't exist. The man understand about the superman. But for us, that's why people in the, in the book, Das Spock Zaratustra, Nietzsche says that, or oh, Nietzsche, the people said, stop, Zaratustra, talking about the Superman, and talk us about the man. And obviously, this is what we had to do. We had to create the emperor, the king, the wise king. And for that, we had to create the internal bodies. And those internal bodies are coming from the dust of the ground, from Adama, or from Adama, which is the ground. Doesn't mean that we have to go to a place where it's clay, where it's dirt. Remember that we, the physical body, is Malkut. And when we discover atomically the forces that are in our bodies, and we say atomically, we're talking about the dust. Because that is what is dust, atoms, forces, attributes, which are in Malkut, in the kingdom. There is where we find all those elements that we need in order to create the man. How do we create the man? We have to elevate the forces of the ground, the forces of the earth, in order to create the elements, the three garments for the soul, which many times in many lectures we stated is the astral body, the mental body, and the causal body. The body of willpower, the body of the mind, and the body of emotions. Those are called electronic bodies. We have to create with a sublimation of the sexual force. All of those elements, alchemically speaking, are placed in the seed. This is, uh, alchemically we said, the 12 salts of the zodiac, which are represented by the 12 tribes of Israel. It's coming into my mind when the 12 tribes of Israel, or the 12, the 12 children of Jacob, went into Egypt. That is a mystery of the dissension of the forces of the zodiac. Okay, the, by the way, the zodiac is ruled by Chokmah. Kabbalistically speaking, astrologically speaking, you find the 12 zodiacal forces here in Chokmah. Behold here again, pointing there. The dissension of that force, the 12 salts of alchemy, into the world of Egypt means the ascension of the forces 
through Josephus or Joseph, which is the stone of Yesod. In the Bible, when you read the word Egypt in Hebrew, it says uh, Matsarim or Matsarim, Egypt. Did you see the word Matsarim, Egypt? As nothing. When you say Egypt, it would say something similar, right? But not Matsarim. Which means distress. Which means also uh, Itzmuz. Or what you call, uh, to be more specific, when you, uh, there is a word in English which is called Mesopotamia. You know what is Mesopotamia? Mesos and Potami means earth between two rivers. So the word Matsarim is Egypt in the Bible. But when we study the letters in the Hebrew alphabet, we know that M, Mem, means water. So, this Zari is between the two waters. And what is Zari? It's a balm. Or a way in which you perfumed. It's made, it is written, by 11 elements in order to please God. For instance, those 11 elements are related with the 11 sephiroth. You say, why 11? Because there are 10 plus that. Those 11 are within Joseph. Sari. This is called in, in, in the Sohar or in Kabbalah. Sari is made of 11 elements which you have to sublimate in order to have a smoke offering perfumed. To your inner being. But that comes from Mazarim, the word Egypt. That's why that Zari is between two Mems, the two Mems or the two waters, which are, of course, the sexual waters of Yesod, of men and women. But Egypt is that precisely that element or that place, which is Malkut, the kingdom. But before here, we have two, uh, we will say that the Bible talks about two children. The children of the devil and the children of God. Egypt, of course, is a place, Malkut, the kingdom, where everybody is a slave of the sexual waters. So when you enter into this knowledge and you start following the doctrine of Nazism, you discover that you are in Egypt, symbolically speaking. You have to go out of Egypt. But in order to go out of Egypt, you have to build the pyramids first. There's a symbol. It's coming into my mind also Quetzalcoatl of the Nahuas. The Quetzalcoatl, the incarnation of Jojma among the Mexicans. He was teaching them how to build pyramids as well. And the Toltecs is called the builders. And obviously that is the same symbol in which first you had to build the pyramids of thought, your internal bodies, the astral body, the mental body, the causal body, from the earth. 
He says, yeah, the pyramids are made from the earth, from the clay of the earth, from material of the earth, but it's a symbol, the same symbol, in which you have to build your internal bodies with Adama, from Adama, which is the ground, which is your own body. But for that you have to know the mysteries, in which you have to, 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 to take from Egypt the elements to build When you read, uh, keep reading the book, of, uh, uh, the, Bi- the book of the Bible, the books of the Bible, you find, for instance, uh, uh, the book of Exodus. And it's written there that the Israelites were 430 years in Egypt before they leave, or before they left. In Gnosticism, we explain very well that Israel is related with Isis, Ra, with a solar force, and El is God. So Israel are all those particles, forces, that are in Egypt, particles of God, that need to leave the world of Malkut. But for that, they have to reach the age of 430 years. In alchemy, in initiation, we know that numbers are related with Kabbalah. 400 years is related with the mental body. When you enter and you sublimate the forces of the zodiac in Egypt, you create within Elevate the, the fire in the spinal column, the fire of Kundalini. And then the, you acquire in the physical world, in the physical body, 100 years. When you rise, when you rise, the energy of the vital body, the Kundalini of the vital body, then you acquire 200 years. When you come and create the astral body by rising the energy in the astral body, the astral plane, you acquire 300 years. And when after that you rise the energy of the mental body and create the mental solar body, and then you reach 400 years. But then you continue by creating the body of willpower, telema. And then you know that you have to rise that energy. 33 vertebrae. They are related. That's why when you reach a 33 vertebrae, and then you reach 100 years or 200 years. I mean, you don't need to reach 99. 33 is enough because it's related to the 33 degrees that you need to acquire in your spinal column in order to acquire the 100 years. For each initiation, 100 years. But before, before reaching 500, when that energy rises in your body of willpower, the 30th vertebra, and then two ways open before you. Or we will say it better, Two ways open before Chesed, because he is the one that is creating through Adama, the men, the terrestrial men, the poor man that needs the assistance of the rich, which is Chesed. Is he rich? Because he has wealth in heaven, the inheritance of his own 
God within. Because Chesed is the outcome of Bina, the Holy Spirit. So then, when the human soul is reaching that level, two ways open. The way of the spiral and the direct path. The way of the spiral is the way in which the initiate follows his own perfection through many lives, through many reincarnations. But he is already a human being. He has the right to call Adam. An Adam which is in process. is not an Adam into the image of God yet. But it can be. If that has said, takes the direct path. And for the direct path, and then he has to pass for the three levels of the letter Dalet, in which that terrestrial man, which is that Adam, that was built in Mazarim, in Egypt, has to leave Egypt. To leave Egypt has to do through great ordeals. Behold here. That's why these four arcanum is related with the four elements, as we said. It's related with the cross as well. We have to uh, to pass for ordeals in the physical world in order to go into the exodus. And after going into the exodus, which is the, the direct path, you have to pass also for ordeals, the four ordeals, always. And that's precisely the word that's called here, Mazarim. You have to come out of the stress of ordeals of tests, in order to conquer levels of your being. Many things have been spoken about the different tests and ordeals that the initial has to pass through. And that is symbolically speaking, or uh, written in the Bible, about the different... uh, distresses uh, the different ordeals that the Israelites were passing in Egypt. And you find that in many books. How before going to the higher levels, the individual is tested. It's coming into my mind, the Master Jesus, when he is born... He goes to Egypt. And after conquering all of his initiations and developing the inner terrestrial man in him, he comes from Egypt into the promised land. And as a resurrected master, not physically speaking, but resurrected in the fire, and resurrected in the light, appears in the Holy Land, doing miracles, but comes from Egypt. So that's the symbol of Moses taking the people out of Egypt, because Moses is telema, willpower, that we have to build inside, and to take Israel, which are the different parts of the consciousness which are bottled within different idols. Which are these idols of the mind, egos, that everybody worship. This is something very, uh, very important to emphasize here because many people think that when the Bible talks about not worshipping idols, people always put their mind in the statues 
things made there in different religions. And the real meaning of that is related with our own particular psychological aggregates that we worship. Because in Egypt, or we will say it in this three-dimensional world, people worship idols. The idols of vanity, the idols of pride, even in religion, these idols, even if they don't have statues in their temples. When you feel proud of being religious or related with this type of religion, whatever, you are being, as the Bible says, a rich man, proud of being what you are. It doesn't matter what religion. So to be identified with the different psychological aspects of lust, anger, greed, envy, pride, laziness, gluttony, etc., etc., that is, to worship idols. Because we have to worship our God, which is within, Chesed. But people ignore that. Chesed, the inner most, is push aside. And people only care about the idols, the psychological defects and vices that you find in the psyche of everybody. To destroy those idols is to make a new creature. To emerge Adam within. To make really a human being. And to reach the age of 430. In order to go into the exodus. Then. Just by. Being. A human being. You can go on the exodus. Or you can go on the straight path. And this is something very important to understand here because people understand or, or people comprehend that uh, think that the exodus is something physical. It's physical, but it's also psychological and it's spiritual. Has to have to have to have to be balanced. One thing has to be related with the other. And uh, for that, we have to know that this path is a very difficult path. It's a spiritual path. It's not as easy as many people think. People have the idea that uh, to be born again is a matter of believing in Jesus of Nazareth that came 2,000 years ago. So if you accept that Jesus that was the Son of God, and then you are being born uh, by dint of magic, just like that. Of course, that's ludicrous. Because nobody is being born in this planet Earth just by believing in anything. It's physically. We need a sexual act in order to be here in this Earth. Internally, also, we need a sexual act. In other words, we need the same energy, which is coming from the earth and which synthesize. And many uh, times we explain in the lecture of, uh, uh, of uh, energy that the entity of semen, the N seminis, is uh, obtains or attains all of the elements of the universe and the earth. We have to know how to sublimate that in order to create it. But obviously, it's always an opposition in us. In our, those are the forces of nature. That's why when you go uh, and study the book of Exodus, you see that Moses go in front of the Pharaoh. But here, the Pharaoh... As many people think, do not understand, Pharaoh means great priest. 
or great one. Etymologically, they say that Pharaoh means a great house. But we explain already that in order to be the, the, the head of a big house, a big religion, you have to be a resurrected. And always the great avatars, the great messengers from God appears in front of those religions of that time. Moses appears in front of Egypt when the religion of Egypt was already degenerated. Because obviously Egypt had his great golden age in which great initiates, great kings, great emperors were blessing people. And at that time, for instance, of Joseph, when Joseph went into Egypt or, or his brothers sold Joseph to, to Egypt, Egyptians, at that time, the emperor, of course, was a great initiate, a great priest. But in the time of Moses, the religion of Egypt was already in decay. They were no, no longer the Egyptians, but the Egyptians. It was transformed into gypsies. And here's something very important. Because many people say, oh, the gypsies are the lost tribe of Israel. Because the gypsies, you see, is called from a gypsy. You said in Latin or, or in Italian, a gypsy, gypsy is from Egypt. So a gypsy is somebody that came from Egypt, but is no longer an initiate. It's a gypsy. Somebody that lost all the attributes of being an initiate. While the twelve tribes at that time of Moses were the initiates that were really following the new religion. The new form in which the white latch was given the knowledge into a new people. And obviously, that's why the Pharaoh, the great priest there, was already degenerated. As in the time of Jesus, when he is before Caiaphas, the chief priest of the Jews, the Sanhedrin, they were already degenerated. The great splendors of Jerusalem were already in the past. The times where David was alive, when Solomon was alive, other kings of Jerusalem, there was the golden age of Jerusalem. But everything in nature and the story goes up and down, up and down. In Egypt was up and fall. Also Jerusalem went up and fall as well. And that's why Jesus appears in front of Caiaphas. And there's a trouble there, as Moses had have, have trouble in front of the great priest, the Pharaoh. Even though the Pharaoh, because was attached to his own religion, his own beliefs, he didn't believe that Moses was the new avatar in order to guide the initiates at that time. Out of Egypt. But doesn't mean that he was taken literally out of the land of Egypt. Means out of the decay of Egypt. In order to form a new form. And that's why Moses makes a great miracles, great wonders in front of the Pharaoh. Those wonders and miracles are made within. In which he commands the forces of nature. So Moses demonstrates there that he is really an emperor. He is really a king. Because in order to be a king, in order to be an emperor, we need to have God within. God has to command. Because the emperor is an emperor because he is anointed by God. That's why in India... You find the great Kumaras. 
or kings of the past. And you read in many religions, a great, the great solar kings, the Kumaras, the emperors, the pharaohs. You find in the Bible, for instance, King David. Which, by the way, you find her Dalet in the beginning and Dalet in the end. Two Dalets and Vav in the middle. David, a great expression in which Chochmah, Yod Chava, expresses himself through him. In the website, we are putting the Psalm 119, Psalm from David, who was an incarnation of Christ. When we said that David was an incarnation of Christ, we understand that Christ, Chochmah, the Son, which is Yod Chava. And that's why he worshipped Yod Chava in all of the Psalms. And explain the way in which we had to develop that Yod Chava within. And obviously, the son of David, Solomon, was another incarnation of Chochma or Yod Chava. And likewise, many other prophets. But, behold here, that in order to be a king, you have to pass the four ordeals. And I repeat, not one time, many times. The or ordeal of fire, the ordeal of air, earth and water. And that's why the Master Samael on the Or emphasize. He emphasizes in the lecture, the emperor, the four, that we had to learn how to control the elements as Moses was controlling them, as Jesus was controlling them. Was not perhaps Jesus walking on the waters? When I say this, is coming into my mind, somebody that told me, do you know why Jesus was walking on the waters? I said, yes, I know. But let me tell you in synthesis. He was walking on the waters because he was putting his feet on a stone. And nobody saw the stone in the water. I said, you are telling me the truth. It's right. It's right. People never saw the stone in which Jesus was putting his foot in order to walk in the Sea of Galilee. The stone is Yesod, the cubic stone in which this emperor is seated. That stone is sex. It's a squared, has four sides, because it's perfect. When you become perfectly chaste, and then that stone gives you that power to control the waters. If you cannot control your own waters of sexuality, how do you expect to control the waters of nature? This is why in this day and age you see how the fornicators die in a tsunami. If this planet Earth were inhabited by true human beings, nobody will die there in that tsunami. But they are slaves of their own sexual waters. In our area, many people were, of course, abusing sex. So the tsunami came and washed them. An earthquake. If we cannot control the norms of the earth, because the norms of the earth control the earth. But if an earthquake happens right now, and everything is trembling, I'm telling you, that we cannot even control the trembling of our knees for the fear of being swallowed by the earth. But a true human being is an emperor of nature, controls that element, because he's controlling his own earth, his own circumstances of life. Because a real initiate has to control the circumstances of life. 
The worst circumstances of life are the worst opportunities in order to know yourself, in order to defeat yourself, to deny yourself. The best. Yeah, the best opportunities. But the, the, worst op- uh, the worst circumstances of life are the best opportunities. Correct me here. And of course, you have to adapt yourself to the different circumstances. Adaptation is water. When you are before the insulter, or when you are before somebody with a lot of wealth, and you feel hurt because you don't have that rich, you want that wealthness, or that wealth, I mean. Then you are being victim of fire, which is envy, which is anger, which is resentment. Fire is hatred. If you want revenge, that's fire. So you have to defeat that. You have to pass the ordeal of fire. You have to be humble. That's why it's written that the terrestrial man, which symbolizes Dalet, is a humble man. But you, how are you all going to acquire humbleness? Humility. It's humility. How are you acquiring humility if you are full of pride, of arrogance, of anger? God only enters in the emperor which controls the elements. So when Moses was there in the Mount of Sinai, he was already humble. He was a shepherd. What is a shepherd? Somebody that deals with sheep, right? Wasn't David a shepherd as well? But he became a king. Isn't Jesus depicted as the shepherd? Obviously, I am a shepherd because I am teaching to sheep, to souls. There are different levels of shepherds. That's why there is a word that is called in Spanish for shepherd is pastor. And in Christianity, you call it the pastor here, the pastor there. Why? Because he is a shepherd. He's a pastor. He is dealing with souls. So in order to be, of course, a king, first you have to be a shepherd. And that's why the angel appears to the shepherds. When the king is being born, the God king, in the city of Bethlehem. People think, oh yeah, we're shepherds that were in the fields uh, dealing with sheep, physically speaking. No. It's referring psychologically, cabalistically, alchemistically to those that are dealing with souls. But it has to be a true shepherd. It has to be somebody that is seated. That's why you see there in that uh, square, that stone of Yesod, because Yesod is the foundation, is sex. The emperor is seated there because he's controlling the physical body, the vital body, the mental body, and the astral body. Those are the four bodies of sin. It's perfectly seated there. And in the stone you see a cat. Why a cat? Because the foundation of those bodies is in the flesh, which is animal soul. And the cat is a creature of the moon. That's why you see that the cats, as, long, as, as soon as the, the, the dark is, is beginning, they go out. They enjoy to be in the dark. Because they are creatures of the moon. They are ruled by the moon. And they multiply in the darkness. Because you need to know how to practice sexual magic in the darkness, as the, as the cats do. The cats do that. It does the mystery of the stone there. Sexual mystery. Always sexual. But has to be with symbols. And you have to know that. This is how the emperor can hold the wand of power. 
That one of power is the same stuff that Moses was having in his hand. Which is the serpent. And here, behold, people think that the serpent is a symbol of evil. But not. If it's a symbol of evil, why does Jehovah, Chochmah, Christ, said to Moses, throw that staff that you have in your hand on the ground. And when that staff was on the ground, became a serpent. And says, take the serpent by the tail. And he took the serpent by the tail. And the serpent became a staff again in his hand. And then he said, do this miracle, this wonder in front of the Pharaoh. So he will know with whom you are talking to. Obviously, when Moses was in front of the Pharaoh, he's talking about sexual magic. Transmutation of the sexual energy. To be born again. The controlling of the serpent. Kundalini. Or the serpent of brass. Obviously. All the miracles. That Moses did. Was with the staff. You read the Exodus very clear. Everything that he's moving the staff. And doing this. Building a rock. The water is coming, putting the stuff uh, towards heaven. And the great miracles are happening. But it is not Moses the one that is doing it. It is the staff that is doing it. But it is not the staff that is doing it, but the energy in the staff, which is Shaddai El Hai, the power of El Shaddai, which is controlled by Jehovah. Chochmah. It's God that is doing it. Because all the power of the emperor, all the power of the king, is in his God. That's why when the emperor forgets that God is the one that gives the power, he is kicked out. Nabuchadnezzar. Being a king, an emperor of Babylon... Anointed by God, according to that uh, area, one day he was outside of his palace. He says, am I not Nebuchadnezzar, the great king of Babylon? Is not me the one that controls all of this? I am the one that do this and that, whatever. And that God, he says, written there in the book of Daniel, appears. Oh yeah, so you are the one that is doing all of this. Now you will learn who is the one that does it. You didn't do it. He was arrogant, you see. He was not the let, the poor, the humble. And then he was kicked out of the kingdom. And was living like the beasts of the earth. Until he learned that God gives and takes. And this is precisely the great teach of the, of the letter Dalet. That we have to develop humility. We have to be humble. In order to acquire wisdom. In order to acquire wisdom. In order to acquire chokmah. Unfortunately when we enter into these studies. We enter with, the, with that. Uh, how do you call. Part of the let. Back. In the head. Which is the subconscious, unconscious, or infraconscious, the ego symbol. Because the dalet is made by one line, horizontal, and one vertical. But the horizontal line, which symbolizes that will of God, is going, is protruded behind a little bit the letter. That's evil will. The will of God is here, but when the vertical line begins, ends. The will of God. And the other part, the little, out, is the evil will that we have. Because we have desire. And that that's precisely Israel in Egypt. It has to pass for ordeals. has to pass for great trials. In order to make the perfect square. Which will be, will be precisely the perfect man. That will come from Egypt and to have and to have to pass through the Red Sea. Ancient Gnostics said 
We had to leave Egypt and pass the Red Sea in order to become gods. Or we will say, in order to become like gods. Obviously, that is a process. And that's why we will say, to synthesize, that the three wise men of the Gospels of Jesus symbolize these three steps. A black wise man, which is a king. Because a king in Kabbalah is placed here, in Tifereth. In, Je- in the world of Yetzirah, Tifereth received the word of Malachim. In other words, in order for us the, to reach the level of Melek, king, an emperor, a pharaoh, we had to go one, two, three, four, five initiations. We had to reach the level of Tifereth, and then we are a Melek from the Malachim. And that's why the angels is called, they are called Malachim. Those Malachim are the one that falls. Tifereth. From Tifereth. Those are the angels that are said fallen angels. Salomon, the great king of Israel, was a Malachim. A great Melech. But he fell. As is written. Now he's trying to rise again. Because any fallen Malachim, any fallen angel can rise again if he follows the path. And if God gives the gift of forgiveness. Remember also the King David. He was also a sinner. And it's written there. But God forgives him. Because any initiate that reaches the second birth The level of Malachim, an emperor, is a Malachim, is an emperor because inside is a king, which is God, but is still with ego. So he has to fight for his self realization, of his self purification. And that is written also in that great story or legend of the round table. You see how everything is hidden in different stories, different mythologies. Somebody there appear, for instance, in a certain place that I don't remember, but says, I am the reincarnation of the King Arthur. Without knowing that King Arthur is a symbol. For there also appear another woman that says, I am the reincarnation of Winiver the wife of King Arthur, without knowing that it's a symbol. King Arthur is Hesed. Guinevere is Geburah. And Lancelot is Tifereth. We call here the trio within which is hidden the mystery of the self-realization. It is written that King Arthur took the sword out of the stone. That stone is the sword. Because that stone symbolizes the fire, willpower, that we have to acquire because a king without a sword is not a king. But he took that out of the stone. And this is how the initiate, the angels, the great kings, have their sword. And that sword is the one that they use in order to kill the unfaithful ones, the unbelievers. But not outside, inside of them. Because the unbelievers, the unfaithful ones, are inside, never outside. The initiate don't care about the outside people, but the inside one. Because we have a great city inside, in which we find thieves, liars, Fornicators, adulterers. The worst is inside. And we have to clean. We have to go into the Red Sea, the Red of Passion, the Sea of Passion. 
And in there, we have to drown them. But that is the sexual act. In which all the Egyptians, all those elements that are following us, because we are following our own God, had to be killed. They are drowned in the waters of Yesod, in the waters of passion. Do you understand that? You follow that? This is why Lancelot is a serf of the lady of the lake. This lady of the lake, the lake is always a symbol of your soul, of water. That lady is Shekinah, the great fire that we had to awake in order to reach God again. That fire that is in exile in each one of us. The mother Kundalini, Ima, within each one of us. And of course, we need the assistance of a great guru. Who is that guru? Nobody likes him. Because he represents Lucifer. And of course he is the great magician. Merlin. Merlin, the one that gives the power to the kings. That controls nature. That controls the dragon. Who is that dragon? The dragon is the fire in nature. Is the fire within the water. The fire within the air. The fire within the sulfur of the earth. It's everywhere. That's the dragon. And he's inside our sex. That's the dragon. So by our own particular inner being, by controlling the elements, give us power. But there's a great drama. But you read in that uh, Arthurian legend, in the David legend, in Solomon legend, in Moses legend, in Jesus legend, in Quetzalcoatl legend, all of those great kings, great emperors, that were like that because they were assisted by their own stone and sitting there. So that's why we said we need to come out of Egypt. All of us in this physical world are in Egypt in distress. But we have to go back into Eden. In accordance to the great uh, scriptures, Eden is that place that was between two waters. That is precisely the other Malkut, which is the superior Malkut, superior earth, that we had to leave. Egypt, meaning that we had to conquer the elements, the four elements. And we conquered the elements with the cross, with the transmutation of the forces. In order to become kings and queens, because... We are called to be kings or queens of nature according with the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek is the king of the earth, the emperor of the earth, the genie of this planet, the one that is the life of this planet earth is called Melchizedek. And that's why anyone that becomes a king, a malakim, controlling the forces of nature, it becomes like that according to the order of Melchizedek. You have questions? Because with the name of God has many appellations, many significations. 
For instance, uh, the letter H is always feminine. It's all related to the feminine aspect of divinity. In this case, when you said He, means the earth. And when you use He, means the water. Both elements are below. Because the elements above are masculine. Which is Yod and Bab. Fire and air. So when you study alchemy or Kabbalah, you study and you understand that man is above and woman is below. That's why it's written that these creatures that exist on the earth are the outcome of the woman. Of course, the man gives the seed. But the woman creates humanity. And this woman, of course, is related with Malkut. Make us out of the mixture of earth and water. Which is clay. But with the assistance of the fire above. And the air. We heard these are the four elements. Masculine above, two. And feminine below. All of those has to be inside of us. In order to become kings and queens. Because a real human being. Has yod he vav he within. In activity. The real emperor. Hmm? The symbol of the world is the staff. The staff. You see in the card of the tarot deck, the emperor sitting on the stone. The stone uh, uh, below that is the waters. And the waters are the, the, the staff. The staff of the patriarch. You see here, for instance, uh, the very foot of the staff has like two uh, legs, two small feet, we will say. That is a symbol, of course, of uh, the two forces, Hidap and Gala, within which the staff is developed. And above you find, obviously, uh, the brain and the heart united by the fire. Below the staff you find, uh, which is a, a, a level with uh, thorns, which is a symbol of willpower. It means that in order to acquire all of this stuff, which is the staff of the king, you had to do it through willpower, telema. Without telema, it's impossible. This is why we said uh, in Gnosticism, our motto is telema. With telema, we transform the mud of the earth, the dust of the earth. And we create the internal bodies. Because Adam has to be created. Adam has to appear in the psyche of every single human, we will say every single intellectual animal. When Adam appears within the intellectual animal within, he is no longer an intellectual animal, but a human being that has to develop the power of nature. We will say that well, the question is, does Tifereth is also ruled by Mars? Since being the symbol of Lancelot is also a fighter, right? But we will say really that the whole work that we had to do is with Mars, with Telema. But specifically, we had to state that Mars which is telema, willpower, works 
through Hesed and to Gebura, through them into Tiferet, in order for Tiferet to do the will. Because here we will say that Tiferet can change the course of destiny, you know, if he doesn't follow the will of God. Tiferet itself, which is the human soul, beauty, is in reality the king. Because the emperor, the king, appears in the earth and is a human soul. But behind that human soul is God. But in order for God to have been created, that king, that malakin, or that queen, he did it through Telema, through Samael, in other words. And this is something very important here, because there are many confusion about Kabbalists. And the Sohar explains that Samael was there when Eve was tempted. And it's because Samael is a fifth helper, the force of Geburah, Mars, that is directly related with the sexual energy. That's why Samael, Mars, is controlling uh, Scorpio, the sign of Scorpio, which is directly related with the sexual organs. The strength of Samael is the one that gives us erection to the man. So obviously, Samael is the one that when appears, gives the doctrine, and then you have to decide to go up or to go down. To go up, you use the force of Samael, the sexual strength, in the positive way as we explain in Gnosis. To go down is by fornicating. That's why it is written that when Jacob was lying down and putting his head on the rock of Yesod, that stone, he saw how the angels of God were going up and coming down. Because that stone is a symbol of Yesod, the sexual force of Samael. When he awoke, he was fighting. He was fighting with an angel. The Sohar says, that angel was Samael. Yeah, but that fight was not in one night or in one morning. That fight endures many years. Because this is precisely the stroll that every initial has. Stroll with Samael, which is the strength. It's the God, the archangel of the strength, but sexual strength. That's why the name of the master is Samael on the or. On is a Hebrew word for strength, but not the strength of muscles, but the sexual strength. And it's coming now into my mind in order to explain it better. Shemshan. You see the word Shemshan here? Many times we explain in other lectures that Moshe is the one that is born from Mem and Shin, fire. He is coming from the womb of the mother, from fire and, and water, Moshe. But here Shemshan are the same. Shin. Mem, Nun, Shemshan is the strength of the sperm, because Nun symbolizes the sperm, the fish, the power of the sex, and Mem is the water, and Shin is the solar fire, Shemshan, but Aun is the power, yeah, but in, in Hebrew it says Shemshan, Samson, Samson, the strength of Samson is in the sex. That's why in the past were the Nazareths, the ones that were developing the hair symbol of the sexual strength. As more sexual strength you have, more grows the hair. That's a symbol of chastity. So the power of Samson was the power of sex. And that was he has a long hair. When Delilah, the night, came and cut his hair, and then he lost everything. Meaning, 
he fornicated. He lost his seed, his sexual force. In other words, he was fighting with Samael, but he was defeated. Because Samael is a sexual force. But Jacob fought with Samael, and he won. And, of course, he became, because after that, he is no longer Jacob. He's, he is Israel. Because Jacob was the Bodhisattva of the Archangel Israel. Now you have to understand this. We are naming now an angel, Israel, which is an angel, exists. But one thing is him, particularly, and another thing is the symbol of Israel. That angel, when you invoke him in, inter in internal worlds, appears before you. He was Jacob at that time. And in his aura, you can see all the beautiful versicles, the scriptures of the Bible. It's there. Because, of course, the meaning. So, obviously, Samael is the one that takes you from Yesod to Keter, or to Tifereth, and even beyond. Because without a sexual strength, nobody can go any, 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 anywhere. And that's precisely the point here. That's why Samael is mentioned in the Sohar many times. Because the sexual strength it appears always in different ways. And it says that Samael was the one that gave the apple to Eve. That meaning that the sexual force was the one that Eve ate and couldn't control. But Samael now in his way is giving out the, the way in order to take advantage of the sexual force. But he's always there. Samael is there. That's why nobody can hit from Samael. Samael is a sexual strength. Aum. But it says on. That's why his name is Samael, on the or. The strength and light. No, in darkness. Samael, on the or. The sexual strength of the light. Do you have any other questions? Is there a way to strengthen oneself without uh, the transmutation, you mean? Uh, well, besides, you know, not spilling the seed. Um, the transmutation period? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, does, does the uh, master speak about any, like... Any other way to receive the strength of God? There is no other way. Because the strength of God is in the sex. That's why it's called on. You see what precisely the, the story of the legend of Samson. Samson has all the strength, the power. And besides, that's why we put in the website. Samson was carrying the doors of the gate of the city on his shoulder. That's the meaning of something there that you have to understand. It's Dalet. Carrying with his soul, with the strength, in order to carry the karma that we have inside and that we have to defeat. We need the strength of Sanzen, and that strength is in the sex, because it stands on, it's own, the force of the sex that we need. In order to carry that, that's the strength that we need. That's why Eliphaz Levi said, Whoa, of the Samson of Kabbalah, that allows to be tempted. By the sinful Dalaila. Dalaila, you know, in Hebrew means the night or the night, Laila, which means Lilith, the demon of lust. And uh, this, this is very difficult to find in day and age, Samson's. You find them, but with uh, short hair. All right? And of course, that's the beginning. That's the beginning. That's why we had, we had to, we, the beginning, the foundation.
That's why Yesod is the foundation. This is how we start. In order to become Adam, a king of nature, an emperor, a Dalet. Just, I'm telling you, I'm talking to you just about terrestrial man, a poor man, a humble man that had to be created. Just for that, you need the sexual strength. Obviously, in order to go beyond that, a superman is something different. Because one thing is the man in the sixth day of Genesis, and another thing is the man of the seventh day. Do you have any other question? Yeah? In the dark? Yeah. The dark means that in order for us to create the internal bodies, we have to perform the sexual act in the night. That's the mystery of Shabbat. Because Shabbat or Saturday is related with Saturn. Saturn is related with Bina. The color of Saturn is black. That's why when we are worshiping Saturn, Bina, Shabbat, you are black. Meaning, you are working with the forces of darkness. Because in the beginning, uh, God, the Ruach Elohim, was floating on the face of the waters. And there was darkness and void on the earth. And within the darkness is where God said, let there be light. And from the darkness came light. So in other words, if you want to create light, you want to be illuminated, you want to receive uh, wisdom, you have to transmute your sexual force in the night, in the darkness. Never in the day. Because there is not creation during the day. That's why the, the fetus, the creature, develops in the womb of the mother in nine months, in the darkness. If the womb will be open and the son of the ray, uh, or the rays of the sun will enter into the womb of the woman, the child will die. Because somehow the rays of the sun during the day oppose the creation. So that's why we have to do the work of sexual magic in the night. And that's a symbol of Shabbat. That's why it says that in Saturday you have to perform the sexual act doesn't mean that only in Saturday. It means that in the darkness, in the mysteries of the night. And that's a symbol of the cut between the, the stone of Yesod. No, when I said light, I mean the light of the sun. But you can have your electric light there or whatever. This depends on your mood. But uh, if you light a candle, it's better. Because if you light a candle, and if it's the menorah, the nine, which really with the, the nine uh, uh, yesod, and then you find a miracle that that fire in your sex will endure the nine sephira above will light like, well, like here, like here, like here, like here, and that oil will come out nine sephira above. That's the menorah. That's the meaning of that. That your own oil, your own sexual force will illuminate that, like that. But that, of course, is not a matter of one day. That takes, it's a process of self-realization. You see, in all traditions, in all the mysteries of the Bible, you find the teachings that you have to follow. Problem is that people celebrate things without knowing the meaning of it. So, thank you very much, and I hope you understood. To learn more about what you learned in this lecture, we invite you to explore the books published by Gloria and Publishing. 
available from booksellers worldwide. You may also be interested in online courses or upcoming retreats, all of which you can learn about at GnosticTeachings.org. All of this has been made possible by the financial support of listeners like you. Will you help others to benefit from this knowledge? Most spiritual schools recommend a donation of $10 to $20 per lecture. Every donation helps. Make a donation now at GnosticTeachings.org. Thank you. May all beings be happy. Yeah, no one can sing